Hello everyone and welcome to iReddit, bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Monday, April 24th, 2017. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. And I believe the correct phrase is, I am guest. Josh will be angry at you. <laughs> he doesn't have it copyrighted. Yes. Oh, I'm Jenny. Normally fact checker. Yeah, I'm totally okay with it. Fact checkers are great. She's not deceived you at all. Yeah, Josh is prettier than me. No, no. It's true. Maybe in a man way. I'll accept that. Okay. He's prettier than most people in a man way. Have you looked at Nathan yet with that face app? No. Well, I, I, I mean, he was at breakfast with us, but I totally didn't because, uh, well, he was, uh, he had, he was like, had his hat on. He always has his hat on. Not sure how well it'd work if he had his hat on. He's also completely hungover. Yeah. I'm going to send that photo to myself and hang out so that I can drop it in the conversation. But anyway, um, everyone, if you'd like to help support this show, please go to patreon.com slash daily internet. Um, Jenny, since you're the guest, we'll start with you. How are you today? I have some tea. That's awesome. Uh, didn't really expect to be on the show, but... Is it immortality? No, but that'd be amazing. I don't care what any of those vampires say. That'd be awesome. Druids. You know how many things I could learn? Druids. Oh. It's all about the druids. Speaking of druids, have you ever watched the Shannara Chronicles? No. I don't even know what they are. It was a, an MTV show that was very... It was based off of a fantasy novel, and they had, like, druids in it. And the, the, their Gandalf was a druid. Legit. But I, I felt like it wasn't really a druid, because I feel like he was more arcane than, than druidic magic. I feel like druidic magic's not very arcane, you know? Okay. Uh... Yeah, I'll agree with that. Here we go. <laughs> Dude, you look terrifyingly a lot like your mom in that well, face app it, thing. It makes sense. She is so, my mom. Yeah, so Josh and Michael come up to me, and they're just like, check this out. Look at this cool thing. And oh, I'm like, I can't. Not allowed to uh, change the, the web page. I tried to click over to the chat room, and uh, it didn't work. Oh. It, yeah, so they all took out this picture. And so in each of the little segments is your original face. Then what you look like is the opposite sex. Then what you look like if you were old, and then what you look like younger. Tell you what, if I look like that when I'm older, I'm, I'm all right with that. Yeah. I can't see it. Yeah, you, are you in the fucking chat room? Yeah, but I have to scroll to the side because I only have one monitor. <laughs> uh, oh no! Did you need another monitor, Nathan? Do we have one in the closet? Wait, you can't scroll to the side? No, I can. What? What? Are you... oh, oh, why would I? Cause, uh, he doesn't want to see you as a woman. How? <laughs> no, I see him as a woman. I, I can't see him as an old man or him normally. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Scro scroll to the left, motherfucker. Look at me like an old man. No. You, you drag the picture over. I, I don't. I don't. I don't think I. I can I. I could make it bigger. Uh, uh, no, I can't. I can't. I can't make it that far. I don't. I don't. I don't have the movement. Wait. Oh, maybe I can. Uh, no. No. Still can't. Oh, well, it's not important. <laughs> They'll show it to you later. I've already seen it. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> All right. Get rid of that now. But yeah, that app's cool, even if it's just, like, once. I don't think it works as well for ladies. Well, it, it's kind of like for ladies, it tries to, like, delete your hair, which is difficult for it to do. And make you look more dude-ish? Sure. Assuming my delete gender app. Delete your hair. Oh, what, I... if, what if it was a short-haired lady? Yeah, or a long-haired dude. It made Josh have it made Josh have, have short hair. You don't yeah, know me, like face app. Cut. He had like a, a a punk rocker cut. It was, it was shorter than Casey, yeah. Yeah, it was like weird punk spiky hair stuff. Uh, Brett in the chat room says younger is a little off. Yeah, well, I look I don't look hardly anything like I looked when I was like seventeen. I looked like a weird gangly creepy nerd. You were a dude, pretty actually, cute girl. Same. I don't know, Nathan. I need I need to see to believe. Okay, so the problem with I have a lot less beard. The other problem with Nathan is most of the pictures from when he was like seventeen. He is like literally dressed in a shopping bag. Oh, is that true? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I was just so nonplussed about it. Yeah. So by the way, does this does the picture behind Nathan's head not look like a naked woman? It's not. What it's is it? It, it, it's it's anemones. No, it, I say I didn't. I didn't think it was sea anemones. I thought it was like a cloud, like those weird cloud systems where. I think it looks like a naked woman. Or like. Who's got her hand? Who's got her hand around her right breast? 
No, it's like when a fetus is still like in the shrimp stage. Oh man, yeah it does. See? But no, it's, it's totally an anemone. Anemone. Shrimp. It protects me while I sleep. Is that true? Yeah. Is it is it your dream catcher? Yeah, kind of. Yeah? I mean, your, your bed slash hammock is right behind you. Yeah. My squirtle's in it because I sleep with a fluffy. Wow. I, 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 I don't, I don't know. I still miss Baby Cthulhu. He's always welcome to come back. He's adorable. I like Baby Downstairs. Cthulhu. Downstairs. <laughs> I have a lot of fluffies. And it's, Oops. Like, why would you not want a hammock full of fluffies? Um, because there's got to be room for you. There is room for me. It's a double wide. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I gotta scoot it closer then. Thank you for telling me, Kendall. See, whereas I have you like directly in my ear, so it sounded fine. Yeah, you sound good to us. What about no, 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 no. Um, it, actually, so their vol, like, even if you get closer, it'll make you clearer. It's probably on my end. If I turn you up just a bit, I just don't want you to, because like your volume is very um. So this, this becomes a game of of blowing out Michael's ears. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, sure. I'll play. I mean, Brett in the chat room has already done that on a few few occasions of blowing out my ears. Because it's... Yeah. Anyway. I'm going to find a trumpet. A trumpet? Yeah. My neighbor's in the <laughs> Five... Uh, wow. Ah. Happy Monday. Oh, wait, hold up. Nathan. Nice. Five top Game of Thrones cast members to pocket two million pounds per episode in season seven and eight. This is submitted by Vlad Tooth to our television. All right, I haven't seen this. Let me try to guess who they are. Okay. 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 So it's obviously going to be Kit Harrington as Jon Snow. Yes. It's going to be um, um, the da Daenerys Targaryen. Um, Amelia um, Clark. Yeah, Amelia Clark. Okay. Uh, it's going to be. Uh, the guy who plays Tyrion Lannister. Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage, yeah. Um, it's gonna be Lena Headey. Yep, Cersei Lannister. And who's number five? Come on, Nathan. It's either Sansa, Bran, or Jamie. You can't just name everybody else who's left alive. That's just not okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm trying to think. It's my process. Okay, so it, it's either Sansa, Bran, or Jamie. Who do you pick? Come on. I'm going to pick Bran. Nope. Fuck! It, it, it is uh, Nikolaj Coster Waldo. Ah, uh, fucking, oh, uh, goddamn Jamie. Jamie yeah. Lannister. I'm there. You are there, buddy. <laughs> I'm there. I was trying to give you knowing face. Like, come on. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm still on the Google Docs. I didn't see that. Damn it. <laughs> I was trying, buddy. Yeah, th th three Lannisters. They're doing well for themselves. Well, I mean, they're the ones still alive. Yeah. They're doing pretty well, if you think about it. Kind of. Or kind of badly, if they're still alive. Sorry, I'm going to be that guy. I refuse to call um, Tommen or Marcella or um, uh, Joffrey a Baratheon. They are straight Lannisters. Yeah. How many times have we had that conversation with Nathan now? Like, it just out of nowhere, he'll just be like, hey, do you know who I don't consider? <laughs> <laughs> He's very passionate. Just right oh, out of nowhere. Completely. They are not Baratheons. They cannot uh, harness the Baratheon name. Bre I feel very highly of the Baratheons. Brett in the chat room says that the Lannisters have to pay their debt. They always pay their debts. They always do. At this point, Even though... though they might be Targaryen. <laughs> But at this point, what debts do they still have? Everyone's either dead or they have all the money. Interest? Technically, uh, hold on. Technically Cersei is the queen of, of Westeros, right? Sure. So she has incurred the debt of, of Westeros, which it is very known that after Robert Baratheon left um, by, you know, it's being very dead. Known, Michael. Um, well, I mean, while he was alive, while he was king, he had bankrupt the kingdom. So I kind of doubt... Being in a war caused enough of an of a raise in income to to really pay off the debts to the the bank of Bravos. Hey, so Nathan, playing off of something that Kendall said, um, does that mean that adopted children aren't your real children? Answer oh, carefully. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing: adopted children are your real children, but Robert Baratheon was not a father to any of those kids. 
all he did was whore around, drink a lot, and go on hunt. No, he's not wrong. Is his name Zeus? <laughs> pretty, you know, he's pretty much Zeus. Zeus cared about his kids sometimes. Yeah, yeah when that, they I dicked him Zeus, over. Zeus was a better father. <laughs> wow, what does that mean Ooh. for you when compared to Zeus, you suck? <laughs> Uh, Kendall also says you don't have to pay repay your debt if you kill everyone you owe. That's this is true. You, you, that is true. But she she owes the Bank of Bravos, and there has been no attack on Bravos from Essos or Westeros anywhere. So there's actually more than one country in, in the Game of Thrones. Oh there's yeah. Essos. There's Essos. I there's thought Westeros, Westeros was the whole thing. No. Oh no, no Nathan, no! Don't do this now. Okay, yeah, don't, don't, don't <laughs> no, stop it, Nathan. Quit, no, quit, wait, no. <laughs> Heath Ledger's sister clears up rumor linking Joker role to actor's death at I Am Ledger premiere. Guys, picture this map, right? God damn it, you piece of shit! Read <laughs> you the book. This on yourself. <laughs> this was submitted by Quigley, a star movie. So there was a lot of debate and discussion when Heath Ledger OD'd on prescription drugs before the actual release of his uh, Oscar-winning performance in The Dark Knight. A lot of people attributed, like, oh, man, playing the Joker really, you know, messes with your head and ruins you uh, mentally and all these things. And so he probably just killed himself because he was already not doing well, and then he played the role of the Joker. And it's just like, uh, no, that's uh, not true, actually. Um, he OD'd because, well, uh, that's what happens when you're hooked on drugs, especially when they're dangerous ones like prescription drugs. Also, uh, he actually loved playing the Joker. He thought it was, it was one of his most fun roles that he ever took part in, according to her, which was secondhand information from him. That's pretty cool, though. Uh, at least he enjoyed the role. You he was an all right Joker. He wasn't the best. I don't know how you can still barely hear Nathan on like the waveform. He's technically louder than either of us. Get closer, Nathan. Get come closer. closer. Come, come, come closer with us, Nathan. Not have to do it like this. Get it right, all just, of you. Just, just lift it up. Yeah, lift it up, anything. Nathan. I don't have anything to place it on. No, hold it like a man. He doesn't have anything to place it on. Just th slap it on the desk. <laughs> it is on the desk. No, no, your penis. <laughs> That's what he's talking about. Oh, you can't see it. My... Oh, okay, hold on. Does that sound better? <laughs> <laughs> what? I my cord was slightly unplugged. Uh, maybe you were ha you were cutting out a little bit, but I thought it might be our mics over overriding yours. I don't either. Uh, I can turn you up some more. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I can, maybe, oh, <laughs> I moved it out of the fucking, I'm stupid as shit. <laughs> is this even the right thing, Nathan, talk? Uh, okay, I'm gonna be talking. Yeah, it is the right thing. You can keep talking, Nathan, it's fine. So, Heath Ledger's Joker, right, it was a great performance. I'm not sure if it was a, a great Joker. Hmm. He's got nice arms. Um, by far not the best Joker. Heath Ledger has nice arms? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, a particular section that I totally ogle Heath Ledger's arms in The Dark Knight. Okay. Um, so it's right after he gets captured and he blows up the, the goddamn police station. He's riding in a police car and he's hanging outside of the car and his arm is pressed up against the, the police car. It looks real fucking nice. Apparently that is the performance that uh, uh, stick to it. Joker with escaping Britain. I just have to appreciate arms. You can just appreciate. Yeah, it like right it. there. There's even a picture of it right here on the internet. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop this in right here so that everyone can see Heath Ledger's a fantastic looking arm right at this very you moment. You can just leave it as Heath Ledger fantastic looking. Look at that. That's a nice looking arm. You'll you'll see it in like five seconds. Calm, oh, I'll put it. Oh wait, I have to put it over your face. There we go. <laughs> well, because he said he can't see me because he's a jerk. Aww. Yeah, he he did oh, a no, really I great job. I see that. That's on the that's on the appropriate side of the arm. Oh okay. The side of, of the, the arm of the picture. <laughs> what? The arm. You you stupid. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking right? at Heath Ledger. Everybody's IQ like, goes I down a little bit. I don't need this shit about <laughs> miss talking from you. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. Good job, Nathan. You were saying a thing about his performance, though. Uh, yeah, no, no. I, I feel like he has a great performance. But In he bed. Was, he was picked for the role, Probably. right? But I don't, I don't feel like it was the best Joker. I don't feel like it was a great representation of the Joker. It was a, it was a different take on the Joker, and that's what DC likes to do. Uh, yeah, I can so agree with that. Who was your favorite interpretation of the Joker? Live, live action interpretation. Yeah, you can't pick um, Mark, Mark Hamill. Hamill. 
Okay, so the best live action interpretation is probably Jack Nicholson. Why? The the way his look was was spot on. His laugh was really great. The way he portrayed the Joker was just, in my opinion, it felt like the classic Joker that you would read in a comic book. I'm gonna just set myself on fire because, uh, but if I'm not saying Heath Ledger, because I I love Heath Ledger's Joker more than any other Joker. Period. Oh, uh, I, I like Jared Leto's. <laughs> God. Well, I really wish we had been able to see what essentially got cut out of that movie. I think it actually would have made Suicide Squad a more rounded movie instead of just, like, this strange piecemeal thing. They released the extended cut. I haven't watched it. It adds a... It, 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 literally what they cut out was stuff of Harley and Joker. Did it essentially add another movie? Because then I'm not sure if I'm interested. No, it didn't. Oh. It only added, like, 12 minutes. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that's worth it. That That's fine. You didn't like the movie, I did. Suck it, nerd. Yeah, um, no, I, I would be the nerd in this situation. You're the pretentious nerd. <laughs> a Nazi looting paint... A not, Nathan, give me the, give me the, give me the thing. <laughs> you messing up? I did not see that coming. <laughs> you <laughs> son of a bitch. That's Reich 3? No. Two. You're out? It's just two. It's the third oh. take, but I've not had three strikes yet. It hasn't struck out yet. A Nazi looted painting to be auctioned as owner's heirs fall to fail to halt sale. Fucked it up again. Whatever. Fucking, wow. God, I'm sorry. No, I'm reading it. It sounds like no, it. The no, no, I'm not doing it again. You piece of shit. Put that away. Don't <laughs> clack it. <laughs> just wait. Just wait, Nathan. You'll have another it's opportunity. Submitted by Diana Taste of Crossian to our news. So the the painting originally was looted when the Nazis stormed into this uh, the, this per person's private collection. Um, it's it's a just a fucking portrait of a guy. But anyway, I, I don't know enough about art. But apparently, it's a rare, expensive piece worth roughly around like thirty thousand pounds. And it was stolen, and then it started to well, like art does, started oh. to appear and be sold around and stuff like that. And a someone bought it legitimately, um, and they want to sell it now. But the people's People who are the ancestors, or just the great grandchildren, the descendants. The descendants. descendants thank you, <laughs> ancestors. Complete the wrong direction. <laughs> fucking wrong the direction. Side of the fucking yeah. generation <laughs> spectrum. Good job, the descendants uh, were like, no, that's our painting. The Nazis stole it, and the owner was like, that's too bad. Uh, it's mine, and the auction house is like, it, yeah, it, it's theirs. Can we have that be like the new excuse now? So instead of the Wookiee defense, it's now Nazis stole it. The, oh, oh my god. Wait, what's the Wookiee defense? We, you don't know the Wookiee defense? They rip your arms off? Nathan, do you know the Wookiee defense? Uh, <laughs> I remember it from when I was a kid. I don't remember it fully. Oh. Do I, you? I don't want to say it because I'll mess it up. I just can't remember what, what, what. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much where I'm at. Oh, oh. I, I'm not typing on anything. This Wookie. is the part of the show. Or Michael Googles it. Wookiee defense. Is it the Chewbacca defense? Yeah, yeah. The Chewbacca defense. It's from South Park. Is the name of the United S in the United States given to legal strategy in which the aim of the argument seems to be deliberately confuse the jury rather than to factually refute the case of the other side. It was used in an episode of the animated series South Park, Chef Aid, which premiered yeah. October 7th in 1998. So essentially what it was like Johnny Cochran was saying... They were doing, like, the O.J. Simpson trial, and then he pulls up a picture of Chewbacca, and he's like, Chewbacca is a Wookiee. He is from Kashyyyk. Why was he on this other, the, on the moon with Ewoks? It doesn't make any sense. You must acquit. And they're like, oh, I guess we will. And then they acquitted. <laughs> it's, like, pretty much what it was. It was the Chewbacca right, so what's, defense. What's your favorite, like, South Park episode that's just, like, completely out there that you never hear people talk about? Oh, God. There's... I I don't know if there are any that people don't talk about. I, I've got one. Dude, Nick Dennis is in here. What's up, Nick yeah. Dennis? Welcome to the chat room. I've definitely got one, though. Okay, go for it, because I don't watch the show. Any show... Cherokee hair brand tampon. What? Cherokee hair brand tampon. Oh, God, no. Oh, I remember that. that was a good They're episode. all natural. I fucking love that shit. <laughs> Sick. Wait, you just shoving a wad of hair up there? Yeah. Made from all natural Cherokee hair. It's juice. Cherokee, like Cherokee Indians? Yeah. 
exactly. I don't know if people don't talk about it, but like one of my favorite ones was when like, um, what is it like, they moved to Seattle and then they bought like a Prius and everybody was like so full of themselves. No, that was San Francisco. Oh, it's San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. that was uh, that was smug. Yeah, and Where, uh, uh, they were enjoying the smell of their own farts. Yeah, it's because instead of emitting smog, they would emit smug. Yeah. Yep, I, 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 I know the episode in reference. It was awful, and yet I laughed really hard at it, because I know people that that reminded me of, so I just was like, wow, South Park, way to keep it a little too real. Most recent episode that I can even think of is the, the goddamn Yelp episode. Mm. I haven't seen that one. You don't want to. It's real. Well, okay. The end is really I think gross. The newer ones. I think my favorite out of the newer ones is probably where um, uh, Cartman tries to make himself stupid by eating a bunch of oh, fuck, was it hemorrhoid cream so that he can be um, in NASCAR. <laughs> There's also uh, the episode where Cartman feeds some kid his parents. Yeah, that was Scott Penderman. Yeah. Oh Jesus. But no, the, the Yelp episode, totally off topic. This started with talking about someone wanting a painting that's for sale, and now we're on talking about Cartman. Oh, that was my fault. I'm the one who went on a tangent. Or perhaps I used the Chewbacca defense. Sure, whatever. Uh, oh, no, no, the, no. the Yelp episode actually ends in a musical number about the way that uh, uh, food establishments feel about Yelp and the Yelp elite and how they really don't give a shit about Yelp. And so there's a music number which is literally called Boogers and Come, and it's about what they're doing to your food when you tell them that you're a Yelp elite. Oh, gross. So there was an episode of Deadbeat like that where it was um, where it was the chef who died in the kitchen, but he he needed to get over um, this really bad Yelp review because it was his only bad review ever. And so he like ghosted fucking the the guy who was playing or who was in the the main guy uh into making this like delicious looking spaghetti with squid ink right sure which gave it to him and he hated it and um some shit went down the ghost got pissed and threw a bunch of shit and the guy got hurt and he visited him in the hospital oh, and he found out that the guy has literally the worst taste ever he likes like really like gooey uh, pasta and like really shitty fucking jello. Gross. Versus regular jello? Uh, Nick Dennis in the chat room says based on the fact that you guys called it a looted painting, would suggest none of you feel it is stolen either. I, I mean, <sighs> anything taken from Nazis, I feel, you know, like. Well, here's the other part is is that it, it purely depends on like what country you're in. Because in like France, if it, if it was in France, then it, it does go to whoever the original owners were because stolen artwork is a very important and big thing, especially in France. But it's being sold in Germany, and Germany is like, eh, stop being a bitch, because that's Germany. New motto. <laughs> stop being a bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I agree with Kendall. Apparently, if you buy something... It that was stolen is no longer stolen, right? Uh, well, that's actually the way... Yeah, the black market according, works. According that's to art... the black market works. Well, with <laughs> art, yeah, that is how it works. If you bought something legitimately, like you didn't know it was stolen, you bought it in good faith, in most countries with pertaining to art anyway, then yeah, that is true. You just become the new rightful owner of it. Do you want to be art thief? Uh, no. Never mind. How are we going to steal anything, Nathan? I don't know, but I kind of want Nathan to reenact that, like, coming down from the ceiling thing in full leather, and then we're going to have lasers. You just want to see Nathan in full leather. Okay. Hey, guys, if you get to 250, (laughs) (laughs) we will reenact the Mission Impossible. No, no, not Mission Impossible. What's the one with Catherine Zeta-Jones? We're going to reenact that scene with Catherine Zeta-Jones in full leather, but it's Nathan. She was stealing diamonds, was it? I don't know. Uh, I'm they parodied maybe. it in, in Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah, yeah. Ocean's 12? N- no. It was Entrapment. Entrapment? Entrapment, sure. yeah. Hey, you can be Sean Connery. Sweet. Yeah. That's dope. But, yes. I, but I'm not Scottish. <laughs> uh, yeah, I say, I'm not Scottish. But I'm... No. But I, Just you, like you Sean realize, Connery. Yeah, like, you realize that Nathan would be Catherine well, Zeta-Jones. So well, no. I, he is neither... Catherine nor is Zeta Jones. Wait, wait, isn't isn't Sean Connery? His, his it was a Scotsman trying to play an Englishman, right? No, he was trying to well in Bond, know, and then he was also trying to play an Irishman in uh, Darby O'Gill and the Little People. 
and in the oh god that was a great movie i, I love that movie that so much all the time um <laughs> and he, he tried to play a spaniard no he is scottish. scottish yeah he yeah. is a scottish guy yeah okay. but he's trying to play but, other people but he was in a movie we're still not getting anywhere <laughs> about a scottish warrior highlander but he played a spaniard highlander listen to me no i it, am immortal horrible. within no, me lies the just. blood of kings dun, 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 dun. come on never queen sing it i never understood why he got a fucking katana Cause why not because they're i don't know because fucking okay. katana oh dip it. my people yo i'm serious man I want to see you guys roll around with a claymore and not use it correctly. That's right. Unroll.me had heartbroken that users found out it sells their inbox data. This was submitted by Drake G to R Not The Onion. Unroll.me is a free service that what you do is you grant them access to your email inbox, they scan it, and then they send the the proper notification or whatever needs to be sent to all of the spam email, junk email, bulk email services, and get them to stop sending you those emails. They were recently bought by a company, and ever since then, apparently they have been scanning your inbox and then selling that information out. And completely, oh, no. completely legal, because it's in the terms of service that you agreed to, but they, they got found out, and so everyone's like, hey, why are you scanning my inbox and stuff? And the CEO was like, I'm really sorry that you guys feel so bad about this. <laughs> Because that headline was really confusing. Because I was listening hey, to you and I'm like, what the hell? South Park with the, uh, with the fucking oil spill and the guy in the, the, the sorry videos. And he's like, we're sorry. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. And then it was, uh, it was um, the Coonan friends. And they, they had to fight Cthulhu. What? <laughs> God, fucking South Park. <laughs> so he... <laughs> He said it was heartbreaking, but he was not talking about the sale of customer data. He said he felt bad that to see that some of their users were upset to learn about how we monetize their free service. He was upset that someone read the terms and service. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. How could you? Well, and he even talked about that. He's like, the reality, reality is most of us, myself included, don't take the time to thoroughly review terms of service agreements or privacy policies. So we're just going to put stuff in there and hope you don't read it. But if you read it, my bad. Sorry. What a dickhead. <laughs> I don't know if it's really a dickhead thing. Like, are you, uh, like, I, I don't understand how anyone that uses the service that allows them to scan your entire email inbox would be surprised that they were keeping that information and doing anything with it. I would be kind of upset, honestly. I feel like I would, I would be misled in, in the way this service should work. Well, I mean, it doesn't affect how their service works. I mean, they still scan and prevent services from sending you emails you don't want. They right, just... But I feel like if they're making it like this, they should also advertise it like this. They're like, oh, hey, by the way, we also kind of do this. <clears throat> Are they based out of Germany? No. Because uh, I think they want everybody to stop being bitches about it. Um, it just doesn't, saying. It doesn't, the, the, Bring it back, Nathan. This doesn't actually say where they're... Hashtag stop being He's bitch. really serious about it. He's checking to see, like, where they're based. He needs to know now. What? Are they from Germany? I'm, I'm trying to find out, but... Because it, that that sounded really weird. Unroll dot me head. Heartbroken. And I was like, whoa, was that English? Because it sounded real weird. Unroll me head. <laughs> dead, 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 dead. Mm. It could be a song. Well, they were bought by the Slice app, so I mean, that would be something else to look at because that's technically who owns them now. Nobody cares. Well, I, I, I understand you, you that. Wikipedia Slice. I, wow. I, I Wikipedia Slice app. As in, like, cutting con content. That's the name <laughs> of the business. It's not my fault. You could have put, like, Slice Co. or, like... Slice. G.I. Joe. A fictional character in the G.I. Joe universe. Fuck it. I don't even care. <laughs> it's screw you both. That's awesome. Doesn't matter. Just know that if Unroll Not Me, if you're using it, they sold your information. Well, it's not your information, just your user information. It doesn't have any name or private information or anything like that. It's all uh, non designated data. Six. Minnesota man donates his entire tool collection to a newly opened tool library. This is submitted by Twisted Funny Guy TV to our Uplifting News. Not only did he donate his entire tool library, 
He also donated himself. What? Whoa. Uh, so, the, the gentleman's name is David Mary. He is in his late 70s. He's been a, a craftsman and a, a, a tools worker for all of his entire life, ever since he was about 15 when his brother bought him his first set of tools and then promptly died. Um, Whoa. Yeah, right? He was like, wow, that got real heavy real quick. Um, their local town in St. Paul of Minnesota um, wanted to open up a tool library where people could come and work on stuff in a shop and have tools available because tools are fucking expensive or you could take them home with you if you signed up and signed them out and stuff. Yeah. And they were opening it up for donations. And he went, well, I have this warehouse full of tools. And they were like, I guess we don't need tools anymore. And then because he's retired and his wife is uh, in, um, what, what's the name? Labor. No. <laughs> Whoa. No, she she's at a, 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 a nursing home. Yeah, but it, they, they had a different. The article's name for it. right there. Yeah, I know. Well, perhaps it'll give us a clue. Jinkies. <laughs> it's not halfway house, is it? No. Oh man, that sucks. She's in a halfway house. Um. Like she's in assisted living. In That's house. it. Assisted living. Yay! Thank you. Um, so he has a, a lot of time now, and be, but he didn't have space for his tools anymore because they were having to move into assisted living to help take care of his wife. So now he just spends most of his time at the warehouse helping other people that have come to use all of his tools with whatever project they're working on. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. And he's, retirement shit right there. And yeah. he's got like, you know, 60 years of experience. So he's like, what are you building? This? I'll show you how to build it amazing. In like 10 minutes. I want someone to do that, but with, like, camera and film equipment. You know that they have those in particular libraries. They have people set up, and you can check out their time, and you can talk with them about stuff. Yeah. yeah but I'm guessing he's, like, one of those, but he comes with a whole freaking tool library, which is amazing. It's like, holy crap. And a lot of knowledge. Yeah. He said one of his favorite things to do is to, whenever he goes into a restaurant to get down and inspect how they built the table that they're sitting at. That's one of his favorite things to do. He's a God damn it. he's an exciting man. He's, he, he's Tim the Tool Man Taylor, all right? Just his oh, name is okay. David Mary. Whoa, are you saying he's got an incredible crack problem? Or was it just cocaine? I think it was just cocaine. Tim Allen? Who yeah. knows? I don't know. No, it was up his nose. <laughs> that was nice. Good job. It's a pod. Oh, it's terrible, and I hate you. I love him. I do love him, uh, but he grates me. Bye. Wax worms can eat and break down one of the most common plastics, polythylene. This was submitted by Recent Fish to Our Science. So they found a bunch of wax worms in a beehive, and the person was cleaning out the wax worms and put them in a plastic bag and to finish cleaning out the beehive, and when they came back, all the worms were gone and had eaten through the bag. They're like... Well, what happened to the plastic that they ate? So they found the worms and then cut them open and found that the worms had been digesting and completely turning the plastic into something that was biodegradable within like 10 days. That's amazing. And, and so they're like, so this solved a very important problem because there's over a billion plastic bags used every year, or is it a trillion, that said in there. It was a fucking lot. Right. And those take 100 years minimum to biodegrade. So they're not looking, if you're, if you're concerned about the crazy state that uh, landfills would turn into if we just dumped a bunch of worms in there, that's not what they're doing. They want to research and use whatever process the worms do to do that scientifically to break down the compounds to just create a chemical that can do it. Yeah, let's create more chemicals to dump into the landfill. That sounds like a great idea. If it turns into 100% environment safe biodegradable material, that sounds fine to me. I don't know if it's going to be... 100% safe. That's not the solution that they're looking for. I feel like if they just dump the worms in there, it'd probably actually be relatively okay. Yeah, that's pretty biodegradable. Just saying. They're also a very good source of fat for geckos. Is that true? Yeah, his gecko's fat. Yeah, my gecko's fat shit. <laughs> Do you feed him wax worms? I feed him um, wax worms with calcium powder all over him. So, yeah, I now that they... I'm feeding him crickets, but the problem is I don't have the tops of mine. You don't have... Oh, to your cage. Yeah. His, his gecko gained so much weight that he got little fat bubbles underneath his arms. They're not so much there anymore. I've been reducing, not drastically, but reducing the amount I feed him. And, and he's been, you know, just a little more active. Put him on a little gecko. Little gecko. Josh camera. in the chat room says you could melt someone's car. Maybe modern cars. Oh, yeah. They're made of plastic and stuff. Yeah. 
Although most of them are made out of fiberglass. I don't know if fiberglass is uh, polyethylene. Then I might be afraid of those worms. If they started eating cars? Yeah. That'd be creepy. Well, that sounds like can, a bad can you movie. Can a horror movie where it's just yes! an ass-load swarm of mealworms eating everything in town? I love that Nathan and I were on a parallel there because I was like, oh my god, Nathan, you can make that movie. My brain is just thinking of, uh, shit, what was the name of it? It was, uh, it was a 007 game on GameCube and PS2. Nightfire. No. Double O, I'm just, I'll just Google it. Anyway, Damn it. The, because I, I need to know the name. But the, the premise, it, it didn't come with a movie, which was amazing because most of the 007 games are just based off of movies. Right. And Nightfire. That, that is a 007 game, not the one that I'm about to be talking about. Uh, I'm almost there. It, it's everything or nothing. And that's what I thought it was, but I, I, I did... So anyway, the premise behind Everything or Nothing is that because in standard Bond fashion, you know, Bond has to go stop some crazy organization, and the crazy organization has developed nanobots. But what the nanobots do is they're half organic, and they eat literally anything that isn't pure platinum. So the, the, the bad guys had been building tanks out of platinum... And, but it was such a bond thing, right? It's like, I have so much money. I'll build my tanks out of platinum so that my nanobots can't eat it. <laughs> okay, no, I'm really okay with this. This sounds like a dope plan. It, it was, it was like, like, I was sad it wasn't a movie because it was one of the best bond stories I'd heard of because it was so just atrocious. Okay, was, was, it, was, like, was that ever actually a book? I, I don't know. Probably. But. On that same thing, there you would see the nanobots like eating a bridge, and there's just like a, a, a zillion of these itty bitty little green bugs that are just destructing a bridge. Yeah, Zach's totally right. That sounds like a deconstructing. Whatever. Yeah, it totally sounds like an episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000. We could do that, Nathan. We could recreate Mystery Science Theater 3000. Don't they already have another Netflix thing going on? I don't know. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yep. Huh. That said, I mean, I feel like Mystery Science 3... C- Mystery 3K? Yeah. Nathan! Call up! I got yes. this! <laughs> I feel like Mystery Science Theater 3000, got it, is, a, it, is something that you could have multiple versions of, because it's kind of like podcasts. Yeah. In that you could have two different podcasts talking about the same topic, but the personality of the people that are talking about it are what you're there for, more than just the information being presented. We could do this. We could watch bad movies. And we could have a little, what are they called, riff tracks? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like a, it's like the flop house. I fucking love those guys. Fucking Come up with your own, man. The, the only problem with things like uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 is cop- yeah. copyright. Oh, yeah. Incidentally, not that it matters, but just so you know, we did get a copyright claim on one of our YouTube videos. <gasps> That's exciting. What? It was the one where I played the Killing It by Cruella. Oh. Although... Although the nice thing, it, well, it doesn't matter. We don't have monetization on our videos anyway because we don't have enough uh, the subscribers or video or channel views. Did we have to take it down? No, no, no. Because YouTube has evolved past that where they just take the video down or mute it in that any monetization that that video does get goes to Cruella instead of us. Or actually the music group that Cruella signed under, but whatever. Yeah, you guys didn't make any money, so you're fine. Yeah, we don't make any money on YouTube. It's just there as another avenue for people to watch the video. An electric avenue. Uh, te- technically, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, in, uh, you know, national embarrassment news, Donald Trump brags that he got higher ratings than 9-11 in an interview about his first hundred days in office. Oh, it, it just hurts. It hurts so bad. This is the person who represents us all to the world. Huh? Still hurts my face. So, Nathan, do you want to let me know who it was submitted by? Wow. Oh, you. Wow. Oh, my God. Holy no. Uh-huh. Yep. That, that is our who president. Who claims that? Uh, the, a dude who cares purely about how much people like him. This was submitted by Comrade Ogilvy to our politics. By Comrade. So, he was... <laughs> He was conducting an interview with the Associated Press, um, in which he, of course, railed against things like fake news, his former rival Hillary Clinton in the election where he lost the popular vote, but he did want to talk about his TV ratings, because that's what he cares about. 
Um, specifically talking about his time on Chris Wallace's Fox News show, saying it had 9.2 million people. It's the highest ratings they've ever had. Um, it's the highest for Face the Nation, or all as I call, or as I call it, Deface the Nation. Um, and it's the highest for Deface the Nation since the World Trade Center. Since the World Trade Center came down, it's a tremendous advantage. <laughs> it's a triumph. It's a gr- it's, it's tremendous. More people watched me than they watched the towers fall. You know, I saw I saw Muslims cheering when those things were falling down. God damn it, motherfucker! I want to punch him. Wow. Oh my gosh. Well, admittedly, I didn't watch it because I thought it was a bad dream. I was living with my roommate at the time, and I wandered over. I wandered over to the TV. Like I just woke up for some weird reason, turned the TV on, saw what was happening, and then turned it off and went, "What a horrible dream!" and went back to sleep. So. <laughs> I found out in a way that you shouldn't find out in that, so at my school, at, and at the time that 9-11 happened, I was in like fifth grade or whatever the hell it was, and they didn't tell us. Middle school and up, they sat in a room the whole day watching the news, the- but, they, but they didn't tell the kindergartners. So I go home to my mom on the ground curled in a ball, crying, and I have no concept as to why. Your mom is such a tender heart, too. There are a lot of people that cry that day. I cry when I think about it. Oh, babe. Yeah, I, I get a, a tender heart, yeah. Hey, my, my cousin Donald Trump, died you'll get over it. What? I was like, you want, me, you want me to turn that frown upside down into, like, an angry punch? I can just say his name. Trump? Yeah. My, um... Nathan? <laughs> my cousin almost died in the World Trade Center. Yeah, oh, that's crazy. But she got she got pink eyes, so she stayed home. Oh, um. man, that's what's up. Yeah, what a lucky time to get pink eye. If there was ever a lucky time to get it, lucky. Yeah, that, that's legit. But wow, holy crap, what a dick! <laughs> like I got nothing else to say about that. Just like needs to follow oh, that my. German motto. Just, wow. Yep, I got nothing else to say. This fucking sucks. Three. Watchdog slams UN for appointing Saudi Arabia to woman's rights body. <laughs> Two in a row. Wow. What world am I in? This is amazing. Oh my god. Uh, this was submitted by Eric, Eric Iskander <laughs> to Our World News. So... They, they serve four-year terms. There are 13 members that sit on the Economic and Social Council, which is um, part of the Commission on the Status of Women. And one of those 13 members is Saudi Arabia. You know, just out of the 144 rankings of women's rights, they're ranked 141. Well, maybe they gotta have, you know, the, the other... Maybe that's like the constant devil's advocate in the uh, conversation. Sure. I'm trying here. I don't know. Maybe nobody wanted to volunteer for that, and they're just and Saudi was like, "I'm in." Zach said in the chat room says this world needs a hard reboot. We turn it off and turn it back on again. Well, Trump will probably help with that. I'm so fucking done with this dimension. <laughs> you don't have the portal gun yet. Um, but Start working. I mean, I if the theory of infinite ricks and infinite timelines and infinite everything is true, then there is a Rick that exists in this dimension. He just has to find him. What if I'm Doofus Nathan? Oh, no. Does that make me Beavis? Well, no, he's like the Morty of Nathans. Oh, God. Somewhere out there, that means there's a Rick Nathan who's just disappointed in you and everything that you knew. Oh, God. (laughs) You're welcome. I might as well eat my own poop. You already tried, Mr. Shit Potatoes. How dare you? It's the potatoes. I'm not eating the poop. (laughs) No. No, what? Have you, you haven't seen The Martian, and I haven't either, but Matt Damon, when he's, it off when he's surviving on Mars alone for months at a time, he, to help fertilize the ground to grow potatoes so he doesn't die, he shits in the hole, because feces is a, a good fertilizer. Sure. So it also beats that his food that he's eating grew in a pile of his own poo. So, right, but you have to wash it off first before you eat it. You have to put it under your stream of pee to make sure all the poo is off of it. Yep, so shit potatoes. Covered in pee. Wow. Bear Grylls. Of Mars. Right? 
Bear Grylls takes things wait now. I don't need no no don't that that's a tangent that doesn't need to happen. Bear Grylls is a fucking bitch. He's also a weirdo. He's just a weirdo. He likes outdoors and stuff a little too much. Two. Donald Trump to completely turn off the EPA's data service. This is submitted by Laura Mix and Fixin to our politics. So EPA maintains a data service where they provide constant updates on the state of the the climate and the environment throughout the year for multiple places around the world. And as part of the current proposed budget plan by United States President Donald Trump, that will be turned off. Hashtag hard reset, right? Yeah, that's what he's going for right now. Let's do it. For those of you that are concerned, the data will not be deleted. It'll still be accessible. Just no new data will be added. Yeah, there we go. That's all I got. Um, and it is set to be turned off in four days. Is it because the EPA is fake news? Probably. Yeah. But they're not even news, the, really. The EPA, the EPA doesn't boost ratings. They just talk about climate change, which all of my oil buddies say is a hoax. It, it literally I, has in the that... name Environmental Protection Agency. The environment's doing fine. I watched that movie, um, fucking The Inconvenient Truth, alright? Have you seen my you gorgeous see resort at mar lago The environment is beautiful. Oh my god. That's like people that get upset with, why, whoa, why are people talking about climate change and global warming when it's snowing here? Whoa, guys, wait. It's what? like that episode of South Park we were talking about <laughs> earlier. It's smog and smog. Yeah, it is. South Park is pretty much the Simpsons. They've pretty much done everything by now. No, they're just predicting the future. Or the present. They're explaining it. So what does that make Futurama? Awesome. Future. Literally, like, it, it's going to happen. Because The Simpsons is pretty much the actual Bible. That's scary. If that's what the Bible is. I you know, think they've actually done parts of Matt the Bible. Matt the prophet of God. I will, I will take The Simpsons over the actual Bible. These are both fantastic stories. Yeah, it's coming from the Catholic. <laughs> the world's first vaccine against malaria will be introduced in 2018. Submitted by Mavia to our futurology. So, it is not fall, at all in, uh, fall under the terms of vaccines that we have in America because it only has a 4 in 10 success rate. But it's better than we have at all. Um, it is going to be first introduced into Kenya, Ghana, and Mal Malawi. Yeah. Malawi, because they have the highest rate of malaria cases. And so, but the difficulty is, is that the places where malaria is so widespread, it's very difficult to get medicine there. While this medicine keeps a long time, still have to get it there. And it comes in four doses. You have to do one dose a month for three months, and then 18 months later, get one more dose. And it's difficult to keep track of everyone that needs it, as well as to get it to them. Oh, man. First, first I'm going to agree with Kendall. We do need to be able to light our lakes on fire. Second... I have a friend in Ghana. I met him like, well, I didn't actually meet him. He added me on Facebook, and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Why not? He's from Ghana. It's gonna be fun. Is he, he a friend? Like, Is he trying to send you money? No, he's not. He's, he's not uh, from Nigeria. He wants, oh, okay. He uh, he wants to to be a, a footballer, so he sends me pictures of himself at football practice. That's actually Sick. pretty cool. Which is soccer. So yeah, we knew. To to just to give some context of how much of a problem malaria is, there are 212 million new cases every year. Holy shit. And approximately 429,000 deaths every year. Yeah, most of those are kids. Most of them are younger than five. That's messy. Whatever happened to quinine? That doesn't deal with malaria. What was it that it dealt with? I watched it in a movie once. <laughs> yep, because that comes out as fact. It was. It was based off of historical fact about um, um, American POWs. Because every movie based on a true story is completely fact. Well, I yeah, mean, it, if you think had... about it, some of them do work. I mean, cocaine does get rid of headaches. I mean, just <laughs> it, it's throwing true. that out there. Science. You're not wrong. No, and by not the way, by... why was this and under it's... futurology and not under our science? Because the internet? 
Okay. I mean, I mean, it, 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 like it was, 2018 is the future. Yeah, but that was also like some serious science right there. Yeah. So that is funny. Oh, here's a here's a fun question. Um, if something were to be invented in the next like year, what would you want it to be? Uh, Nathan, go go. Come on, Nathan. Uh, hold on. Now, when you say invented, do you mean like that we can prove or like literally fully? Something that we currently do not have that we will have in less than a year. Anything. Anything at all. It could literally be anything. You give me a paralyzation of choice now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't mean to stump you guys. For I'm that. not sure how to phrase it. Uh, some something that um keeps some form of, I guess, a bacteria or some sort of gen genetic development that allows us to stay young and healthy without any any anything else. I want to name it now. Wait. Can I name it the Highlander gene? Yes. Are you just talking about stem cell research? Yes. Yeah. But but I want that to actually, you know, like be perfected and stuff. So in oh. the uh, in the chat we have replicator. Thanks Kendall. That's that's pretty cool. You know, like from Star Trek. There's also warp drive, the TARDIS. I'll I'll accept cloning as a as a as a bad substitute. Laser guns. Pew, pew, we have those. Do we really? Yeah. yeah. I don't know that. Um, Nathan, get get with the time. Start reading some R. Uh, it, it, if I'm not going to choose the the young healthy thing, um, faster than light travel. Oh, that's pretty in good. In a year. In a year. She yeah. didn't say there was any requirements or anything. I didn't. We could. She, we, she, I thought you said in a year. Yeah, no, no. She, I mean, she did say in the next year, if anything could be invented, what would you like it to be? Yeah. So oh, okay. if I'm not picking a way for me to never die and never be fat or unhealthy, then I want to just have a way for us to just travel in the faster, faster than light. See, I thought it had to be kind of realistic setting in the next year. Why? <laughs> okay, Zach in the chat room said something to remove the stupidity gene. One, Zach, we'd all be dead. Oh, it's it's true. Actually, we all have moments of being dumb. Also, uh, Kendall, uh, we probably could uh, build a guardian from Breath of the Wild. It just would cost more money than anyone wants to put into it because it serves no actual purpose. No, I'm gonna go with more giant robots. We can make giant robots. We, that's really that, do giant that robots doesn't like need it. invented. We've invented giant yeah, robots. Like we can no, legit I'm make build, mechs. Like, bigger, better robots. I want to see <laughs> Gundam-sized like. Giant Evangelion ro robots. Right? Le Evangelion? Legit, we can build those. There's just no see, purpose. I want to see one that will take a step and crush into the earth. We could make that. Also, Andrew Walters, uh, young, healthy would only it would, like you say it would probably lead the earth, leading to worldwide starvation. Not if we just. No, do we feed the homeless to the hungry? No, 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 soiling Nathan. Green is the fucking solution. Why soiling no, green? Why can't just... we go the opposite direction and eat the rich instead? You you also stop trying to do uh, agriculture sweet. methods that are hundreds of years old. Instead, you choose the things that people are so opposed to, like growing meat in labs and cultured uh, vegetables in buildings, rather than trying to do it outside. I would eat that bacon. I'd be all over that. Like, we, we already have the technology to get, build, and build, and to grow and produce as much food as we need. Just no one wants, no, like, as soon as people are like, it was grown in a, a, a lab, it's not a real cow, everyone's like, I don't want it. It doesn't need to be a real cow. I'm okay with that. They already make, like, tofurkey or whatever. That's not turkey, people. Have you tried that? It doesn't, no. You are trying to fool yourself, but I know the truth. Soybeans. I also know that some t tofu, if you cook it right, is delicious. That's actually really true. Man, warp, warp travel would be fun, like, really cool, too, like the Stargate. Oh, Stargate would be B.A. Or what about, like, uh, what, in, like, The Fly, what he totally just uh, failed at? But that would actually be pretty sweet. Gene splicing? No, he succeeded at that. Oh. He meant uh, to... It's, it's like uh, awkward teleportation where it dissolves your... You at a subatomic level and shoots you across into the next area that it can replicate in. You know, Wonka vision. But the problem, the problem is a fly got in. Yeah. So 
melded him with the fly. When he shut the door, a fly was in there and he didn't know, and so when all of the genes went up and through the air and stuff, his was mixed with the fly. And but then, like, it makes you question... Got fucked up. It makes you question, like, if you're being taken apart at the subatomic level and put back together, and, like, if your conscious is still there, are you still really the same person? Well, now you're getting into the question of, like, what, what makes you you? Is it your, you, like... Exactly. Kind what so makes you you, man? Like, is, do, you, do you have a soul? Does this unit have a soul? I don't. I sold it to my sister for a That's jar true. of machine and cherry juice when I was, like, t- ten. I am quite well aware. So, like, I mean, because... With people that have had, like, hand um, transplants and stuff, they've experienced some weird paranormal shit with their hand. Oh, yeah, and, like, idle hand syndrome and stuff, to where, like, you may or may not actually be in control of your hand. Someone else might be, or your psyche might be, your subconscious. Ooh, way way better prosthesis would be a really cool thing to have more of. Idle hand syndrome is happening right now. She is grabbing my breast, for those who are curious. (laughs) (laughs) Have you ever watched that movie, Idle Hand? Yes. I've seen it. It's amazing. It's hilarious. It's a terrible dark comedy. Yeah, that actor, he like stopped. Oh. He, he was in like the Final Destination, the first one. Yeah. And then Idle Hands, and then that was it. Maybe he was pretty done after that. Maybe he was just like, you know, I need to watch some Disney movies. And that's what I was trying to get to. Oh no, I'm sorry. He was also an SLC punk. And Andrew in the chat room mentions that they're about to do the first head transplant, and that was one of the things that I was going to mention next. Is we'll see how that guy feels. If he survives. He'll survive. Is it in the heart? Or is it in the Will he? I don't know. Well, I mean, that would be another thing, like trying to do a brain transplant at some point. Yeah. That's what's up. I'm really excited to see if that works. The head I'm transplant? Just, really, I really like, all right, so I feel like in my past life I was a mad scientist. You think you, so? You are a mad scientist now. You're just lazy. I admire Dr. Moreau like a motherfucker. Did you ever and... read that book? Which one? The Island of Dr. Moreau. No. Oh, yeah, I did. No, he didn't. Who was it by? Michael Crichton? Was that who wrote it? No, it's older than him. Yeah, it's way older. It's way older than him. Never mind. Oh, damn, I'm dead. Stupidity gene just hit me. Uh, I also really, really enjoy Dr. Frankenstein, of course. Oh, that's such a... The Frankenstein book is really good. That's by Mary Shelley. What, what? No, that one. I got to teach a lesson in high school on that. Yeah? Uh, we were reading it, and, um... I noticed in the very beginning it said that he studied alchemy as a kid. And so I was like, wow, Frankenstein's monster is pretty much a homunculus. And everyone's like, what the fuck is that? And I was like, oh, let me tell you. And the teacher's like, y- you can stand up in class and tell everyone. And I was Did like, you oh, pull cool. out like a slideshow? You had it in your pocket? Let me grab this. Hold on, hold on. Let me plug no, this in. No, not quite. But I did go up on uh, to the board and, and I drew uh, on the board. Um, did you draw the homunculus symbol? Come on, Nathan. Did no. you? I wasn't that good at drawing. Jesus. Kendall in the chat room says that there's a theory that we have two minds. We only hear the verbal one, and the physical one falls along with it usually. Um, all that also co- translates into the idea of your conscious and your subconscious are not actually parts of the same mind, but separate. And there have been people that have had surgery that they separated the two the two lobes of your brain and experienced some interesting things. The most common, like the, the mo- one that's most referred to, is like. Before they have the surgery, it's like, what's your favorite color? Blue. Okay. And then they would, the, after the surgery, they would put the blocks out in front of them and be like, okay, grab the block that's your favorite color. And their their right hand or whatever would reach for the blue one, and their left hand would go grab a yellow one. Ooh, science stuff. Hey, Nathan. Uh, I, what? Hi, Mr. Oh, hold on. Stop! I wasn't. I wasn't done. He needed to talk more yeah. about his presentation. I, I, we're already at yeah, an hour. I was, I, was, I was just about to say that I. I almost. To the, I, I almost feel like your stomach is pretty much another brain too. And I'm not being cheeky, like oh, oh you yeah, know. And your cheeky. dick. You're totally I'm cheeky. Hungry. But no, it like it. It dominates a lot. A huge portion of your life. Well, just like called, your dick. Well, that's called survivability, and that's normal with any kind of instincts. Animal. It's, it's your base instinct. You, your body is literally going, hey, we're starving. Go find something to eat. Nothing else is important now. I need to eat. I need to make babies. That's the way you think. What? Damn, the next time you want something to eat, I'm going to be telling you to sell down. No, no, not at the same time. You guys want to go to pizza? Yeah, watch out. You might try to give me some No, babies. those are different instincts. <laughs> I need to eat. Period. New instinct. I need to make babies. No, Nathan, you're not wrong. It's just pretty much the idea that your body then cuts off, like, 
other lines. So, you know, like, let's, let's use a Star Trek um, kind of metaphor Maybe here. chips. I need chips as well. Chips and salsa is life, okay? Mm. So, yeah, Star Trek. So when people start hitting the hell out of your, you know, your shields and then shit starts going down on, you know, and you're just like, well, what do we do? Scotty says shit's down downstairs, too. He's not going to give it back to us for two minutes. So you get two minutes to figure out the important things and to survive until Scotty can magically find some dilithium crystals hidden in a locker somewhere and suddenly you have your shields back. You know. Hey, Nathan, what'd you care about this weekend? Uh. Really? A lot uh, of stuff, apparently. Would you like us to come back to you? No, I mean, I didn't really do much. I didn't really read anything. I know. I didn't. What? <laughs> You may have right. vibed many things. About. You, you got a lamp. I did. I did get a lamp. That's cool. It shines um, off of your beard just majestically. My, my, my favorite thing about this weekend was I um, I got to I got to go to a going away party for Chad. Chad's leaving in like less than six days. Where's he going? He's going back to uh, Minnesota. Is he going to write more books? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, Chad. That's cool. I'm, I'm sorry, buddy. Enough. Aww. I have only, like, talked to Chad, like, twice in my life, so, um, yeah. By far the coolest guy whose name is Chad ever. Normally, Chads are dick bags. This Chad, coolest dude. Do you know lots of Chads? No, it's just Chad's kind of a douchey name. Okay. There, there, I, I, there are some trends in names. Like, every single Scott I've ever met has been a super cool dude that has made terrible life just choices. Whoa, that's my middle name. <laughs> that you're you're not named Scott. Your middle name Scott, not yeah. first name. It's, it's it's guilty by association. No, not by the direct nor the indirect property, nor by the transitive property. You are named. Um, I don't have many buttons here, so you get that one. Oh yay! What do you care about in, in some some time? Dude, so okay. The thing she that called I... me dude. <laughs> The thing that I cared about, and caring not in a, like a great way, is that the Cash Me Outside girl is going to be a millionaire. I thought she already was. Oh, that makes it worse. Okay, yeah, she has so literally done ready. nothing. I, I want to say she, she's been in a couple music videos, and I want to say that she's going to have her own TV show. Well, no, the, 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 the <laughs> biggest thing from it, Cash Me Outside... Yeah, seriously, I think it's just from people following her like on Instagram, TV. and then... She gets the money from that's that. That's it. it. Yeah, and that's what I was getting to. I just needed to look because she has something like 14 million followers on Instagram, just and and you can legit her. have an entire career off of Instagram. Yeah, she doesn't have to do anything for the rest of her life because people keep following her, and they're like, she's so. Stupid. It's Ari. Ari, we love you too. <gasps> what? Ari. Oh, Ari, I miss you so much. We miss you. Yeah, she has 9.2 million followers on Instagram. When you have that many followers, you can hold up a can of Coke and get paid a hundred grand. Dude. Hey, follow me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> At Bimenstein. We're going to start holding up cans of Coke. Seriously. So, I mean, if you just do, if you have enough followers, you can literally just make your entire money by being an Instagram model. It's literally a thing. You just have to have the people. And she has done enough to stay just barely relevant enough to keep that many people looking at her because there's lots of people like the, the damn daniel guy damn daniel hitting it again with the white vans that guy also spiked up to like four million followers but he never did anything with it and so he dropped back down to like 80k which 80k is respectable but it doesn't what what's the matter it just pains me this is this is terrible this is where money is going to this person who by all rights if actually was like I'm, I'm from the ghetto and all this stuff. Like, her mom would have beat the crap out of her and we never would have heard anything about it. Like, no. This is stupid and uh, just, it all blows my mind. That, that damn, like, Maury Dr. Phil TV show. This Dr. Phil. Good job, Dr. Phil. <sighs> You're helping he's not, and he's just... not even a doctor. He's like Dr. Pepper. Not even PhD certified. <laughs> Can he get, like, a an honorary degree? No, fuck that. I don't want him to get an honor. Oh, no. Degree. I was talking about Dr. Pepper. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I, would, I would be okay with that. Yay! Well, I mean, they made, they made prunes taste great. Like Zach in the chat room says he misses the days when 15 minutes of fame was just 15 minutes. The, the, the difference with that is is that back in the day, 
when 15 Minutes of Fame, the only reason that you got that 15 Minutes at all was because, like... You worked for it. You got in commercials. You, yeah. Or, you knew you were famous and people wanted to see your face. So, you, like, Gangnam Style all over the place. You got to open for, you know, Limp Biscuit, Or you, you got featured on the news for some reason. <laughs> because I needed someone who was older. Oh, my God. Nathan, you could open for Limp Biscuit now. So, but... Uh, with your... What is that called? With the theremin. But now in oh social God, media... <laughs> So Patreon.com slash daily internet. 300, we will get him a theremin. I'll even build it and put it together myself. It's the cheaper one. It's the 250. You want to see me wave my hands at a thing and make music? Fucking do it. You do that already, buddy. <laughs> but with, with social media nowadays and how widespread it is, if you do it right, if you if you catch the smallest break, it, it and the, here's the thing, is that we're criticizing this because it's so, someone that we find... Um, unintelligent, someone that we do feel doesn't deserve it, etc. Uh-huh. But this is also how a lot of modern successful people that we do like got to where they are. But I feel like they should be successful because we like them, not because they're... People apparently like her. No, I don't think it's that they like her. I think that's the opposite. Like looking at her, watching her, following her, however you want to describe how it. successful are like fans failed. Are haters. What? Her biggest fans are haters. Yeah. That's it, right there. Also, I mean, what we're doing right now perpetuates it. Talking about exactly. her? I'm not going onto her stuff. I'm talking about it in the fact that I just want people to stop. Stop. S-T-A-H-P, stop. Stop. Because just leave her alone, and then she won't get any money. W-F-T, stop. Okay, then. Damn it, I missed the button. The thing that I cared about over this weekend is that Reddit is going to get a full redesign. So, Reddit has been slowly hinting at the idea that they are wanting to move from what they are and towards a more legitimate, like, social network, um, so, like a social media platform. So, about a month ago, they tested allowing people to post directly into their user account profiles, like it was your own personal page, kind of like a Facebook wall. Or MySpace. And think of subreddits as, like, Facebook groups. Now, the thing is, is that you're, if you remember the way that you could customize, customize your MySpace page, which on the surface couldn't do much, but if you understood how the coding of MySpace worked, which most of us just went on to friggin' the internet and Googled up, you know, MySpace templates that were all shiny and shit, and then pasted, pasted yeah, it in there. Did. Yeah, you know you got that glitter all over your MySpace. You can do the same thing with Reddit, and it uses CSS programming, which it's a very simple programming language, but anything with the word programming in it makes people go, ah! Except for Alicia, shout out. So, Reddit announced three days ago that they are going to be nixing CSS from the entire website and doing a full redesign from the ground up to where it'll be very easy to customize. So the idea is in like instead of needing to program in your banner, you can just like a Facebook group, click on the little banner, and then choose your image, and it goes, boop, that's your subreddit's banner. So here's the thing is that right after they do this, this is not confirmed, obviously, but I can see the future for a moment, is that Reddit is going to be pushing to be a social platform. They want to be like Instagram, like Twitter, like Facebook, whatever the which one, or like uh, Snapchat, whichever one you want to pick. They, Reddit wants to be a part of that because there's a... I swear to God, if Reddit gets a story, I'm going to lose my shit. Oh my there's God. There's so much money in social media and Reddit wants part of it. I'm so excited to see your story on Reddit now. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> I need a new Reddit account. So, the reason that I bring this up is that, like, with Facebook groups, we, we have a Facebook group called iReddicast, right? Sure. You can have more than one of those, I believe. What do you mean? You could have multiple groups named iReddit. Oh, sure. Reddit doesn't work that way. What If there's a group called this, there can be nothing else called that. Are you wondering if that will continue? I'm, I'm pretty certain it will. And the reason that yeah, I... Yeah, but you can get really close. Here, The reason that I bring it up, though, is that if you are listening to us now, and if you have any, it, it, not literal stock, like pu- not publicly traded stock, but any personal stock in Reddit... And you want want to have control over something that you might be interested in? Go get your subreddit right now. You there's no limit to how many you can create, and they're free to create. Nothing on Reddit costs money. So if you think you might want something, go get it now. 
It's like the new dot com. Yeah, exactly. It's like a new domain, except on what is trying to be, not, not officially, but I believe is going to be trying to be pushed as a social media platform. No, I mean like when the whole dot com thing happened and everybody was like... Just grabbing out. up domains. Yeah. Same thing with Twitter handles. Yep. Which is annoying as crap. So you were actually going out and like making a bunch of subreddits and selling their names later would be good. Well, here's the other thing is that like with the Twitter account thing, well, that's really fine. annoying because Twitter has no system in place to recover... Um, squatted accounts? No way uh, to recover a squatted account. You realize I'm super visual, and when you said squatted account, I inside just went, hey, 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 like a 12-year-old boy. Well, I mean, you're squatting on it. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Little bird squatting, you know. Whereas, like, Reddit already has a, a full process for recovering, um... If you like, if you wanted, like, if you wanted R Nathan, incidentally, if you it, R Nathan is yeah. a subreddit that there is nothing there. It's not active or anything like that. Um, that said, these you can request it. Be like, this is a, a dead subreddit that no one's on, and the dude isn't doing anything with it. Can I have it? And a solid like nine times out of ten, they'll be like, here we go. I kind of want to know if there is an R Nathan subreddit. There is. Mm-hmm. I I looked earlier because I was uh, doing this, but uh, there's nothing here. There doesn't seem to be anything here. It's but, just the one dude in his face. Come on, Nathan. Yep. Yo, user Neutron, give it over to our boy. His name is I'm, Neutron. I'm going to share it with all my Nathan friends because I've got like four of them on Facebook named Nathan Woods. Oh, I, that's right. I did uh, I did go ahead and grab our Bimenstein for you. Oh, thank you. That's You're love. welcome. That's real sweet. We also currently have our Daily Internet, our iReddit cast, our Mjolnir Media, our Schwan, our Schwan Song, our Super Sentai Sunday, and our cast Oh my bar. god, Schwan Song? Yeah, yeah. That That's pretty If cool. I ever actually wanted to choose a derby name, that's my derby name is Schwan, Schwan Song. Song. Yeah, for all the announcers to just go like this to you when they try to say it. And here comes Schwan Song. Schwan Song. Coming around in turn one. <laughs> He Dude, got your retainer and it's... that's what it would be like. <laughs> oh, God. That's what bleak it... everywhere. It's what it is. There are some names you just you're like, why would you even think that this was a good choice? Have you said your name out loud? Have... Schadenfreude is one. Oh. All right, so now that we're almost approaching a, an hour and fifteen minutes, let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, because we gotta eat some chips. I need some chips. <laughs> chips. Come over, Nathan. Again. Nathan, get the fuck. Why? Why, why have you not moved in you yet? You have bacon. I'm going to eat lots of tacos with bacon and refried beans. Dude, you should make a bacon taco. Nathan, move in. Bacon tacos, making bacon tacos. No. Bacon tacos, making bacon tacos. No. Oh. No. Adventure okay, Time. Okay, so really pancakes. Adventure Time's so bad. Did you see where they put that with the Alicia Keys song? Yes. Hell yeah. Oh, dude, that made my freaking day. Anyway, so everybody, if you want to support the dude, show, please I go to patreon.com slash daily internet. <laughs> You can follow us on all forms of social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. It's all on at uh, iReditCast. Otherwise, uh, be sure to leave us a, uh, a voicemail, 508-738-2278, or send us an email, feedback.ira at gmail.com. I want people to leave voicemails. Those are the best. Help spread the show um, by sharing it on whatever platform you can, or just help us be found by more people by leaving us a five-star review on any platform that you do listen to us on. What do you listen to us on, Nathan? Um... I use uh, Podcast Addict. Oh, see, I use Google Play. I use uh, the the i the Apple Podcast app, iTunes. Because you do everything Apple. Not everything. Do you want me to start pulling out all your Apple stuff? Well, I, I, there's only two of them. They're right here. Oh, <laughs> just like they're just they're right here. I'm using them. Yeah, that's good. Because they're useful. That is too many. Seriously, why? What? It's a pod. Oh. Yep, I caught it. Don't worry. Still hate you. Kill you later. <laughs> Don't kill him. Why not? Because I'm sure at yeah, some point not? the government will come for him with all of his uh, fantastic theories, especially if you are in, like, the coalition of Nathans. We as a group debated on killing Zach yesterday. Is that true? Yeah. Damn it, Zach. Well, all I'm I... saying is Rob Stark is motherfucking Lady Stoneheart. That's perfect. All right, everybody. That is your 275th dose of the internet. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. I'm Jenny! Have a good day, everyone. Goodbye! Bye!
raw meaty. Mm-hmm. You can just send it down, throw it, whatever. I'm not gonna throw it. Wouldn't hurt it. Hmm. I realize I have to fix my glasses. They must have been hit while we were playing derby and they kept sliding down my hands. Ari was there! That was cool! 